In this lecture, we are going to learn how to create and use a user-defined route constraint. A user-defined route constraint is also called as a custom route constraint. So, to understand how to create a user-defined route constraint, let's open Visual Studio. And there, the first thing which I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a new route. So, for that, we can say endpoint.mapget. Okay. And here, the first thing which we need to do is, we need to define a route pattern. And then, we can specify a middleware function. And this middleware function will receive the HTTP context object. Let's simply call it context. And let's say the route is going to look something like this. So it will be slash user slash. And then we are going to specify a route parameter username. Now this username parameter can only accept alphanumeric values. It cannot accept any other type of value. So for example, this username parameter can accept letters, numbers, or a combination of both. It will not allow any special characters. Now, to accept only letters for a route parameter, we have a constraint called alpha. So we have already used that constraint somewhere above. So you can see for the author name, we are using this alpha constraint. It ensures that the route parameter only receives a text value. But we don't have any built-in route constraint which can accept alphanumeric values. But for this username, we want to accept alphanumeric values. And so, since we do not have any built-in route constraint for accepting only alphanumeric values, we are going to create a custom route constraint for that. And to do that, the first thing which I'm going to do is, inside this routing project, I'm going to create a new folder. And I will call this folder custom constraints. So inside this custom constraints folder, we are going to keep all our custom constraints. Now keep in mind that a route constraint is nothing but a class. Okay. So when we want to create a custom constraint, we need to create a class. So let's go ahead and let's create a class. And I'm going to call this class alphanumeric constraint. All right. So here we have created a class. Now, in order to make this class a route constraint, we need to inherit from iRouteConstraint interface. Now, if I go to this iRouteConstraint interface, and if I scroll down, you will see that this iRouteConstraint interface exposes this match API. So here, when we are inheriting from this iRouteConstraint, we need to implement this match method. Okay. So for that, let's go ahead and let's right click on this iRoute constraint and let's click on this quick action and refactoring. And there, let's select this implement interface. Okay, so here we need to provide an implementation for this match method. Now this match method takes five parameters. So let's talk about them one by one. But before that, I will move these parameters into separate lines so that it will be easier to read. Okay. So the first parameter here is the HTTP context object. It is the same HTTP context object which we have been working so far. So if you remember, in these middleware functions, we are passing an instance of HTTP context object. We are calling it context here. In the same way, this HTTP context which you see here, it is also an instance of HTTP context object. Then we have this route of type iRouter. So this iRouter is basically the route on which we are using our constraint. In our example, this route is going to be slash user slash username. Okay. Then we have this route key. This route key is the name of the route parameter that is being checked. In this example, this username is the route parameter name. So this is going to be the route key. Okay. Then we have values of type route value dictionary now this route value dictionary it contains all the route parameters specified on the route in our case we are only specifying one route parameter called username here in our route we have only one route parameter which is username so that will be the key of the route value dictionary okay and the value which we specify for that route parameter in the url that will be its value for example, here, let's say the URL is slash user slash 
may be Manoj Jha 10. So, for this route value dictionary, this username will be the key and this will be its value. And finally, we have route direction. Now, this route direction is basically an enum. If I go to this route direction, here you see we have two values, incoming request and URL generation. Incoming request means that a URL from a client is being processed. The URL, the request is coming from a client. But URL generation means that URL is being created based on the route definition. Now here, we are not creating a URL. We are basically handling an incoming request. So in our case, the direction is going to be incoming request. All right, now let's go ahead and let's implement this match method. So let me remove this line. So here, we are basically going to check the values which we are going to receive inside this values dictionary, whether it is alphanumeric or not. If it is alphanumeric, in that case, we will return true from this match method. But if it is not alphanumeric, in that case, we will return false from this match method. Okay, so first of all, let's check if this values dictionary contains a key called route key. So here, this route key will be assigned with username. So we want to check if this dictionary has a key with that value. So here, let's say if values dot contains key and there, let's pass route key. Okay, so here route key will be username and values is a dictionary and in that dictionary we are checking if that dictionary contains a key called username. If it does not contains that key, so here let's use this not operator. So if this values dictionary does not contains a username key, we want to return false from here. Otherwise, if this values dictionary contains a key called route key that means in our example if it contains a key called username in that case we want to proceed so here the first thing which i'm going to do is i am going to create an instance of regex type so this regex is a class which we use in c sharp to create regular expressions so here let's create an instance and let's say new regex and to this regex we can pass the regular expression now, what should be the regular expression here? So, the regular expression here, it should allow user to pass alphanumeric values. So, for that, we can say we want to accept values from lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, and then we also want to allow users to include numbers from 0 to 9. Okay, and keep in mind that a regex starts from cap sign and it ends with a dollar sign. And let's also include a star here. So this regular expression here, it will allow to accept text values, numeric values, and a combination of text and number. But let's say for the username, we only want to accept either the text value or alphanumeric value. We don't want to accept only numbers. For that, in front of this, we will use another set of square brackets and we will specify that we want to accept a to z in lowercase and a to z in uppercase so now the value should be a combination of alphabets and alphanumeric values it should not allow any other value all right so here we are creating a regular expression now let's go ahead and let's create a variable this variable is going to be of type string and i will simply call it username value and now what we are going to do is we are going to check the value which we have received for the route key in our example, if you remember, this route key is username. So we are going to check what is the value we are receiving for the username. And for that, we can say values of route key. Okay. Now, this values of route key, it is going to return an object. So we are going to convert it to string type. For that, we can use convert dot to string. So inside this username value, now we have the value which the user has specified for the username parameter now we are going to check if the username parameter matches this regular expression for that we can say regex dot match and then we can pass the username there all 
okay so if this username value matches this regular expression in that case this expression will return true otherwise if this username value does not matches this regular expression in that case it will return false so let's pass this statement inside an if condition so if this returns true that means the value is a match in that case we want to return true because the value can be accepted in that case otherwise we want to return false and this should be is match okay so here we have this warning possibly null reference argument let me go ahead and let me convert it to nullable type all right so here we have created a custom route constraint for that what we have done is we have created a class we have make this class inherit from i route constraint interface now this i route constraint interface exposes this match api so we need to implement that match api this match api this match method it should return true if the value is a match that means if the value can be accepted otherwise it should return false if the value which we are passing for the route parameter if it cannot be accepted so here we have created our custom route constraint but asp.net co-application is not aware about this custom route constraint and to make asp.net co-application aware about this custom route constraint we need to tell asp.net co-application where to find this custom route constraint so for that we need to go to this program.cs file and before we are building this app so before we are calling this build method on this builder on this builder we are going to add a service for that on this builder we can call services dot add routing okay and to this add routing we are going to provide some options and on this options we need to use constraint map basically to map a constraint this constraint map if i hover over it it is again a dictionary and to this dictionary we are going to add some key and value so the key will be the name of the route constraint which we will apply on the route parameters here you can provide any name but here i am going to call it alphanumeric and then we need to specify which class to use here so for that we need to specify type of so basically we need to specify the type of the class which we are going to use and the type of the class here is going to be alphanumeric constraint okay and in order to use this alphanumeric constraint since it is present in a different namespace so if i go here this alphanumeric constraint it is present inside this namespace so we need to import that namespace inside this program.cs file and now the asp.net co application is aware about this custom route constraint and finally what we need to do is we need to use this route constraint so i will copy this route constraint key keep in mind that we need to use this key for applying the constraint okay and i'll scroll down and here we have our route in this route we have this username route parameter on this route parameter i want to apply this alphanumeric constraint now from this route let's return some response so first of all i'm going to create a variable i'll call it username and to read the username let me copy this line let's pass it here and here we are using this route values dictionary in order to get the value of the route parameter and here we need to specify the route parameter so route parameter name is username let me pass it here we make it nullable type and then let's send some response so for that let me first use this await keyword and then we can say context dot response dot write a sync and here let's say welcome and then the username okay now let me go ahead and let me put a breakpoint here inside this match method and let's run this application all right and now let's go ahead and let's type the url so it is user slash let's say username is manojha 10 so if i press enter you see the breakpoint has hit here and let's see the values so this is the http context object where we have request and responses 
okay then here we have the route so this is basically the route on which we are using the route constraint now here we don't see the value anyway now let's go to this route key so here you see the route key is username basically the route parameter name then we have this values dictionary and inside this values dictionary currently we should have only one item so you see the count is one key is username and its value is manoj 10 so the value which we have passed for the username route parameter and then we have this route direction and it is incoming request all right now let's go inside this method so here this values dictionary contains this route key so this condition will return false and we will move to the next statement here we are creating a regular expression then we are reading the value of the username route parameter so as you can see the username value is manojha 10 now we are checking if this value matches this regular expression for that we are using this is match method so in this case it will match it so true will be return okay let's continue and in the result we should see welcome manojha if i pass only text value for example manojha without any numeric value then also let me continue here we should see the result welcome manojha the username but now if i try to pass only numeric values maybe one two three four five and if i press enter this time the regular expression should not match so if i say f10 here we are creating the regular expression here we are reading the value so as you can see the username value is one two three four five so in this case the regular expression will not match and you see we are returning false and when the false is returned in that case this route it will not match because this constraint fails and in that case this default route will be called let's actually see that so when i continue here you see it says the url which you are looking for is not found because this value did not satisfy the route constraint even if i specify alpha numeric with some special characters for example manoj hyphen char 10 in that case also it should not match the route constraint and we should be redirected to default route so in this lecture we learned how we can create our own custom route constraints for that we are creating a class we are inheriting it from i route constraint then we are providing the implementation for this match method which is being defined by this i route constraint interface in this way we are creating a route constraint now in order to register this route constraint here before we call this builder dot build we are adding a service and we are adding a route and there we are using this constraint map to map the route constraint our custom route constraint and make asp.net co application aware about it there we are also specifying the key for that route constraint and this key will be used on the route parameters all right so this is all from this lecture now here i have an assignment for you so what i want is i want you to create two more custom route constraints for allowing only values from 1 to 12 for the month value so i want you to create a new route constraint called month and that route constraint should allow only values from 1 to 12 for that you can use this regular expression and then i also want you to create another route constraint maybe you can call it date and that date route constraint should allow values in the date format like this so either like this or like this or like this okay for that you can use this regular expression okay and then once you have created those route constraints just use it on these routes so instead of using a regular expression here i want you to use your custom routes if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day